Hi there, welcome here, welcome in UI Encode video. My name is Philip, and this one will be explaining how NavMesh agent works and how you can use NavMesh agent. This lecture is taken from my full course. You can find on the link in the description, and you can see it right now on your screens. And one more thing, if there is some code in the lecture you don't understand, there is also a link to my GitHub repository where you can find the whole project and also code from the lecture. So happy watching and see you in the video. In a lecture, we got position of the player as soon as we are going to detection range of the enemy. In this actual continue, I will introduce here a new topic and we'll use this position so enemy can follow the player. Okay, let's start. You can stay here in Unity and uh, let's click on the bandit and let's add a new component to the bandit. Okay, so let's click here add component and uh, this component is called navmesh agent. This component is part of AI package, so artificial intelligent package, and it handles lots of stuff for us. So all of the pathfinding, so the way how to find a, for example, player, it will be handled in this package. Okay, so we don't need to code any artificial intelligence. Of course, we can if we would like to improve the functionality, but already the core functionality is already included. We can use out of the box. Okay, so what we are looking for for a package is, as I mentioned, is called NavMesh agent. All right. And in order to navmesh agent to operate properly, we need to also introduce here some navmesh. Okay, we need to provide a navi navigation mesh on this surface of the platform so play so enemy can navigate navigate on this surface. But I will I will be talking about this later. For now, we have here this navmesh agent. On navmesh agent, you have a different types here of a of a field. So you have here, for example, for a steering, so speed, angular speed, acceleration. We'll be testing out all of these functionalities later. For now, we can keep here these default values as, as they are provided. We don't need to provide anything else. Okay, so just a navmesh agent here. Okay, since we have a navmesh agent, we can get this component in our bandit behavior. So let's go to coding editors and let's get here this navmesh agent. So simply let's write here private private, uh, private navmesh agent, you can see it's not provided provided to us. So let's write here navmesh agent like this type. When you will click here or hover over, you can see here, we need to be used here using Unity Engi Engi Engine AI. So let's click on this. All right, now we have here navmesh agent and let's call it M underscore navmesh uh, agent. All right, perfect. Okay, so now do we have here? No, we don't have evac. So let's write here evac. All right, in evac we get here uh, navmesh agent. So m underscore navmesh agent get component. All right, type navmesh agent, and that's it. All right, and when we have our uh, when we have our target here already. Okay, so when we when, when the player is in the detection range of the enemy, we will get here target position. And we can use one method available navmesh agent. There are multiple methods, but we would like we would like to access here the method set destination. Set destination, and to set destination, you need to provide a vector tree target. You can see here description sets or updates destination, thus triggering the calculation for a new path. So let's provide here a set destination, and to set destination, we'll provide a target position. All right, just like this. All right, so since we have a destination, as soon as we'll go into the enemy range, this this should be executed and we should start following the player, but we will be not following the player. We will see that there will be some issues. But let's save this, let's go back to Unity and uh, let's see what will happen. So now we have another match agent and you can see here through the way we are getting here warning, fail to create the agent because there is no valid nav mesh. Okay, when I will go here in the detection range, we are getting here error. So destination can only be called on an active agent that has been placed on a nav mesh. All right, so what we need to place here will be nav navigation mesh. To place it on our surface is very simple, actually. What we need to do, we need to open here a new window. So let's go up here. Let's click here on the window, and here is an AI. On the AI, you have a navigation. Let's click at this. And in the AI here, here, you should have an open AI up here. I have here now inspector lighting and navigation. So 
Let's click here on navigation, and you have the bake here. The similarly as with the with the lightning bake, you can also bake a navigation. So it doesn't have to be computed at the comp at the runtime of the game, but it's we will uh, bake the navigation match. Uh, mesh before we'll start running the game because it otherwise it would took uh too much uh too much power of our of our memory okay so let's get here on the bake and let's provide here just these default settings we don't need to really provide here any other settings we'll be talking about them anyway in the next lecture so for now we don't need to really understand what we have here but we can just click here bake but as soon as you will click here bake basically nothing is happening you can see i can click here bake nothing is happening in order to bake nav navigation mesh on the surface, your surface or your game object has to be marked as a static. Okay, static game objects are game objects that cannot be updated at the runtime. That's very important because navigation mesh, mesh has to be on the game object that cannot be updated at the runtime of the game. So then we want to make a some game object static simply let's click on the plane here and inspector on the right up you have a static okay so when you will toggle this this game object will become a static uh, before we'll do it let's increase the size of this uh, surface let's say here will be 777 777 so it's big like this all right and then simply click here on the static all right and that's it okay so now we have a static we can go to bake so let's see our navigation bake let's bake and now when you will bake it you should see here this blue layer this is navigation match mesh on which enemy which is a nav mesh agent now the component nav mesh agent is part of our enemy can navigate on it okay, can communicate together with nav mesh nav mesh we have rendered here generated here the nav mesh agent can, commu can communicate with this and it can detect the path to the player Okay, and we'll call this a destination method. Okay, so let's play our game. Let's clear this out. Let's play our game. I would like to show you one thing before I will go into detection range. Let's oops, let's go into detection. Let's play the game. Let's click here a scene. And as our plane is marked as a static, let's click on the plane. You can see here in this here and axis, you have a here, there is static. You can written here static, and these uh, axes are fade out. So I am not able to change the position of it. Okay, I can click and I can try to change the position but I cannot really change the position of this game object because it's static okay it cannot be updated at the runtime of the game all right so now let's go to a game view all right and let's go to detection range of the enemy as soon as you will go to the detection range of the enemy you can see the enemy is uh, simply following you okay we, are, we don't have any animations of the enemy this looks like kind of weird for now but you can see that the enemy is definitely going into the detection. The enemy is going is definitely following the player. Okay, because thanks to this acquired position, we are getting in look for a player method. We are setting the destination of the enemy, and the enemy is following us. Alright, guys, so I guess that's a good start. We have a nav mesh agent, we have generated nav mesh on the surface, we can stop the game. In the next lecture, we'll continue. We'll be talking about all of these parameters here. I will be explaining how we can use them. Also, the parameters of our bandit nav mesh agent. We'll be testing them out, trying different values. So, yeah, let's stop it here and let's continue. Next one, we'll be, we'll be talking more about nav mesh. So, I hope to see you there, guys. Cheers.